Good morning, traders. <clears throat> Can you hear me and see my screen? If you could, just uh, type yes in the questions there. Okay, excellent. Thank you, David. Uh, all right, guys, let's get started. Uh, so uh, rounding out the week here, uh, Friday, uh, this is the Bookmap Live trading webinar we've been doing here in Discord for a few weeks now. Uh, with the... Um, uh, educational uh, goals here uh, it's all a part of our educational course that you get with bookmap uh, first there's an online course that's four parts if you haven't watched the videos uh, I uh, really uh, encourage you to do that first uh, we're gonna go over the same course content in these live markets uh, so all of the uh, uh, different uh, vocabulary uh, and uh, uh, terminology is already in those videos as well as like these concepts that we're going to go through rather quickly uh, due to this being the live market. The, the concept of the education is you have the course, learn from the course, come to these webinars and be able to apply what you've learned in the live market. Uh, the kind of analysis we're going to go through here is live forward-looking analysis of the market. We'll read the current market and give insight to where we think price will move next. It is not hindsight analysis. Uh, we will go through hindsight if people re request it or if we want to look at something uh, uh, to uh, as a lesson, uh, as, as well as like a uh, where price might go looking on higher time frames uh, we will go back in hindsight and look at uh, behavior and then give insight to where we think price will go next so that's our goal here uh, now it's not uh, necessarily about trading strategies nor uh, 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 trade management uh, we have uh, live trading webinars with JTrader, a stocks trader on Wednesday, and Scott Bolsini, a futures trader on Thursday. They will go through that uh, because Bookmap is not a trading strategy. Okay, a Bookmap is a platform. There are many different ways to trade. JTrader and Scott trade completely differently. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, everyone has their own style of trading. Uh, Bookmap is the playing field, the platform. Uh, so uh, it's important to understand and use uh, uh, the tools here in Bookmap uh, to get what you want from your trading method. All right, so uh, we have a very complete education, these three parts that you get. You get the course, the live forward-looking analysis, and the live trading, and it's all included. It's all free. Uh, I really encourage you and, and uh, uh, suggest you take a look at other competitors out there. Uh, no one offers anything like this that I have seen. If they do offer education, you have to pay for it, and you have to pay quite a bit, uh, hundreds or even thousands of dollars, and a lot of that education is just static. It is uh, uh, documentation of different things and uh, PDFs, imagery, etc., and they just go, here you go, uh, and uh, uh, or videos, uh, and then that's it. Uh, no follow-up, no live forward-looking analysis. If they do live analysis, it's probably uh, in hindsight, most likely, and I doubt they're going to offer any trading room services for free. All right, so anyway, uh, just some things to uh, uh, consider. I, I just think it's a really nice program that we offer here, a lot of value. Uh, I hope you guys are getting a lot out of it. Uh, all right, so let's go through some disclosures, and then we'll jump in. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in here. Uh, we're going to take a bigger picture approach first uh, and um, I just want to let you guys know uh, on our Twitter and YouTube uh, channels uh, you might want to follow along a great webinar yesterday with Scott Pulsini the recording is here uh, and uh, I also want to show you, you on YouTube uh, where you can find this uh, as well so we just kind of um, uh, reorganized a little bit the uh, home page on our YouTube channel here um, with the playlist, bookmap intro videos, pro trader webinar courses here or series, um, some selected webinars, features and components, order flow education, and uh, live um, uh, recordings of the live streaming here, uh, Discord uh, events. Scott's and, and JTrader's uh, webinars are here. Okay, so if you want to watch them, they're here. 
uh, all of them are here. You can click on the on the text here and open up the entire playlist, and you'll see them all in here. All right. So that's that. If you have any questions about that, uh, let's take a look at this uh, S and P 500. That's what we're going to take a look at and jump into. Uh, and uh, before we do, um, uh, we're going to take a bigger step back and, and look at the uh, uh, broader picture, understand what's going on in market structure, and then we're going to drill down in that market structure. All right. So uh, we're going to look at the order flow uh, in book map aligned with the higher time frame structure. So let's jump back here. Let's take a look. Uh, this is the daily chart over here on the left. This is the hourly in the middle, and then we have the 15 minute on the right hand side. So here's what we saw and we were looking for. Uh, we kept these uh, boxes uh, on here, or this uh, analysis here, these drawings. Uh, we were looking for buyers around this area. We found them. Uh, we had a nice move to the upside. Now this was due to a lot of iceberg orders that we saw uh, last week and the beginning of this week, and we saw a beautiful move to the upside. Now it makes sense that we're also uh, you know, moving down to the downside, the news is not so good out there. Uh, so, uh, uh, however, I just want to point out that, you know, even with the news, uh, it, larger players activity or when the majority of traders are uh, aligned in a specific direction, uh, you know, the, the market's going <laughs> to, it's, they're going to make money. Uh, it just makes sense. Like uh, if they continue to um, absorb or, uh, get filled on higher time frames over a, a long period there's not going to be any more selling pressure and that's when they're going to make their money uh, so uh, buyers will start to come in and they'll move price back up uh, and uh, that's exactly what unfolded so uh, having that context and understanding of uh, and this we saw in book map right uh, especially with the icebergs uh, we saw this uh, we were in tune with that uh, and this move played out really nicely. Now, why didn't it go up any higher than this? Well, I mean, the news is not good, uh, you know, so, but they made their money, uh, clearly. Uh, you know, they made their money along the way here. Uh, so um, uh, above above where these icebergs were, uh, back up into just about this 4740 area. I thought it would hit 50. It did not. Uh, it went up to just shy of 40, uh, and then we're, we're dropping here. Okay, so we're right back down, almost right back down to, uh, well, uh, these, these previous areas here. We, we just opened up in the previous area down here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the 15-minute um, uh, the, the chart here. Uh, and hold on. There we go. Okay. We can get rid of this here. This is what we drew up the other day. Uh, we were looking for this, this move to the upside. Uh, the um, the trend line really does not apply any longer here so we can get rid of this this zone though it still applies okay why is because this is where we found uh, buyers previously and we would assume that uh, we will find buyers or at least short covering uh, in this area as well uh, and we have so far okay so the cash uh, open here uh, was down below the swing here okay it's going to knock a lot of people out that were maybe swing traders or whatever looking for a bigger move here uh, and uh, now we just went up and filled the gap here okay so you can look at these areas here and these are pretty high probability uh, you know we opened up down below the gap is up here uh, you know there's going to be a lot of covering and a lot of people um, uh, maybe entering or uh, uh, you know having to buy back so uh, here we are right back up to the uh, the gap fill uh, what do we think now at this point uh, well it's not not so clear actually uh, the um, uh, you know looking at some of these uh, maybe uh, uh, we'll look at some profile or some market structure in here uh, the trend is still down okay we know that uh, so maybe a pullback to some of these trend uh, uh, trend lines or uh, you know, maybe it just fills the gap and then just kind of uh, starts to go exponential to the downside here. Uh, one of the big scenarios for today is it could just just chop between the low and the high so far uh, in uh, in this area here. Uh, maybe it comes up a little bit higher. Maybe it comes up into kind of this swing or this area here. Just looking at previous value areas, right? 
Uh, so in fact, we could probably you know draw another line in here uh, up around this um, uh, 4663. Uh, something like that, or, or maybe a, a different zone in here as well. So, in fact, let me let me draw another line in here. I think I have better um, luck with lines in here because these um, squares they just they they're static and price moves and they're outdated. So uh, let's see here horizontal line. I'm sorry, drawings horizontal line. Okay whatever huh okay what did I do wrong uh, let's see 40 is that what we want 46.52 that's fine I mean I can adjust it all right. Well, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, I don't know why it's not drawing. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm not too too good with R Trader Pro. Uh, anyway, this is the higher time frame that we're we're kind of looking at, and we're looking. Let's just keep this in mind here. This 46.64 area here, uh, and uh, maybe I'll draw something else here instead. I'll draw a a um, trend line okay somewhere around here yeah and we'll just keep that in mind uh, this this area here so we're looking at kind of a range here uh, could also draw another trend line over here uh, just to uh, keep in mind uh, other um, market structure here yeah something like that okay all right, so we're good. So we're just kind of looking at some of these areas in here on the higher time frame and not really seeing much today. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into book map and see what's going on. Uh, here is the uh, the move from uh, uh, yesterday. The move uh, uh, we can see here to the uh, the downside, um, and then the, we have the overnight session here, which just chopped back and forth, uh, and then we immediately dropped here uh, in the um, in this cash. Uh, session here or I'm sorry we opened up uh, down down in this area here uh, like we were just seeing that gap fill and that gap has already been filled so uh, let's just zoom in here a little bit more and uh, see what's going on all right so we're back up into market structure up here uh, around this 4650 and we just filled some of this liquidity up here uh, and uh, uh, yeah just kind of chopping back and forth here and we're still bullish. This this little structure from the uh, cash open is still bullish. Uh, we see the buyers come in here, higher highs, more buyers in here, kind of equaled sellers on the other side here. Uh, and then we made kind of an equal high here. We just made a higher uh, low in here. So just, again, market structure. What is the volume within the structure, the back and forth uh, structure that we're looking at here? Uh, creates value areas. Uh, it might be a diagonal value area. It might be a horizontal. And then we can look at our volume profiles, et cetera, and start to understand value areas uh, a little more uh, in a more concrete uh, manner. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, not not seeing much here uh, either in this market uh, at the moment. All right. One thing, uh, let's see if we can get a little bit of buying up here now, uh, right here where we are. Uh, and this little swing here, if we can, I think we can come back up and, and break above 46.50 uh, and maybe hit 55 here. Okay, so looking for buyers at the moment. Let's just zoom in here. Now for this scenario to play out, uh, what are we looking for? Well, a skew in the order book and buyers here. Okay, here's, here comes some buyers. A little bit of skew is already showing up here. And uh, we're looking for these guys to pull here at 50 and we can go, come up into 51 and then maybe 55 here. Okay, so uh, just just shy of 50 uh, at the moment here, and we've already pulled back. Okay, and now what about the volume up here? Not showing us much. Not showing us much at all. Okay, this volume here looks pretty good. I mean, just for this small move, and we're not looking for um, you know much here. Uh, if the volume was of different size in here, and we saw a nice movement along with it, we would be looking for that move into 55. Okay, we didn't really get what we we're kind of looking for here. 
uh, just shy of 50, and then that was it. Now, uh, we can you can see we're down at the bottom of the range again here, uh, and uh, uh, high liquidity starting to come in here at 46.44, uh, and a little bit of a bounce so far. Uh, let's see. There was a question earlier, um, and uh, uh, just and Craig, it was just because uh, you had uh, uh, mentioned it before the webinar, <coughs> just before the webinar. Um, uh, so let me let me read it out loud, and then we'll we'll take a look at it and go through it here, uh, since uh, we're not looking for too much here at the moment. Okay. Uh, let's see if these buyers can come back in and hit 50 again. I'm 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 I think we can do it here. Uh, I just they're bidding up here. I'm just not quite getting buyers yet. Okay, and then a move just up to 50 to begin with. Uh, anyway, uh, Craig's question here, I'm, I'm reading the order flow. I'm having a hard time telling if liquidity is affecting price or if price is affecting liquidity at any given moment. It seems to occur simultaneously most of the time. Please share your thoughts on this. Okay, so uh, the, the answer here uh, is... Uh, uh, to it's understanding the context here, right? So now they're bidding up here at 45. Look at they just added more in here. Here are the buyers we're looking for. We're already at 50 and beyond it, and we're at 52 now as well. Let's try to reach 55. Now, does 55 fit our higher time frame? Yeah, we were looking for 63 or so up here, right? So uh, looking for this to break out. Okay, so far so good. We're up at 55 already. Uh, so, uh, yeah, looking for a bit of a pullback here and continuation up to 60. Stop runs are starting to occur. That's good. Okay, we're looking for that as well. Uh, and uh, we have some iceberg uh, orders in here as well. Okay, not a whole lot. Uh, it looks like it's a lot, but it's not. Yeah, it's just a blip here. Most icebergs are actually here. Oh, I'm sorry, here, and they were selling. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to Craig's question, and let's just zoom in here. And we're gonna we're gonna go through an exercise here. Uh, so uh, we're still looking for this to move to the upside. Okay, we're we're in an uptrend. The volume looks good. It's moving price, uh, uh, and um, uh, that answers part of Craig's question. It is volume that actually moves price. Okay, liquidity technically cannot move price at all. It can stop price from moving, and that would be absorption. All right, so uh, that's um, a short answer, but it, it, the the question is about the context. So, for example, um, and this is actually uh, Craig. I, I would recommend uh, watching part one of our educational course. Okay, understanding a market mechanics uh, and how liquidity that technically can't move price, but how it affects price. Okay, so now we're, what we're going to do is this exercise here is we're going to take liquidity off of the chart, um, or I'm sorry, volume off of the chart. Now we're going to look at just two elements here on the bookmap chart. We're just looking at pure price action here, best bid and offer, streaming, uh, and uh, and liquidity here. All right, so here's our context. Look at they don't, they want to be buyers here. It looks like okay, they came into the book. They're front running this area here at 45 and a half. Uh, and there's liquidity up here at 46.50. Okay. Now we're looking to see maybe in this area here a skew in this order book or supply and demand. Now this kind of happened at the same time. Uh, in fact, it looks like uh, uh, sellers came in first, Craig, then liquidity came in. So yeah, a lot of times it is kind of like that. Uh, but you'll see like how um, liquidity comes in and then price reacts to it. And that gives us a lot of insight. Another thing that really gives us a lot of insight is liquidity that transacts and then what happens? Like high liquidity, important liquidity that transacts. That is the event. Then what happens after that? So see how these guys are pulling here. So let's see if we can come down into 43.25. Okay, they're, they're adding more here on the offer at a lower area.
Okay, there's our 43.25. Now it, it tested it. Did it trade it? I, I, we don't have the volume on. I, we don't know. Uh, it looks like it did. Yeah, I would say it probably transacted. Only, yeah, 94. I mean, that's not bad. And how much was there earlier? It was about 130. So most of that transacted. That gives us some insight. All right, so let's see what happens after that event. Okay, so far, we're still at that area here. So there likely is some more selling pressure. Okay, here come, here come the buyers, actually. So th this is what we're kind of looking for. Is there more selling pressure or, or are buyers interested here? Okay, so a little more on the offer here. A little more on the bid here. So we're not getting too much out of this right now. Well, they continue to, to offer at lower areas here. But the bid keeps on jumping back in. So we're just kind of kind of even with a slant to the downside here. Okay, now see, see them starting to pull a little bit there. That's kind of interesting. As price is coming up, they're starting to pull away. Okay. All right, so uh, all right, here comes the move back down lower still. All right, so now I'm I'm really curious now since we're getting down into some of these levels here. And let's look at our previous price action and swings in here, and structure. Okay, there's a swing down here at 40, 46.40, and there's another one down here. Okay, so there's there's a, a few in here uh, here as well, and then we're breaking this trend line. So again, we're looking at market structure here. and some of these swings okay now what we want to understand in some of these areas of market structure is is this liquidity getting filled looks like it again okay and there's still more selling pressure here okay so we're looking for still to go lower there's 38 okay But you see how balanced the book is in here, and there, there's our imbalance right there, right there, right. So this is this is where how to, how to read this, or you know, start to use this to to your advantage. Now it's happening very quickly, uh, and these guys are back out, so it's, it's likely to come right back down again, right. But uh, we need to see if they stay in the order book here. Okay, so let, we can go through this here, and they're starting to stay in here. Okay, so now do we get buyers here? If we get some buyers up here, they should come right back up to 43.50 or at least 43. Okay, the, these guys need to stay in the order book and the reaction to this needs to be price moving up. See, they're not really staying in the book. They're kind of fickle in here. This is, they're starting to show a little more action though, uh, more on the bid here. Okay, and, and they and again he pulled. Now they're even pulling down here. So, you know they they, they don't really want to be uh, buyers here. But we're waiting and we're watching here because it's getting kind of interesting now. We're down at some of these levels here. They're still pulling, still pulling. Thirty five is even pulling down here. There we go. So it continues to move on lower. Okay, now let's see if we get a skew in the order book here and if we can come back up into about this 37 level here. Okay, looking for maybe a skew. Here's our skew. There's our reaction. We're just looking for about here, 37. That's it. Now this is a pullback though, right? The trend is down decisively. Here's our skew again right here. Okay, now what's the reaction to price? Okay, see they pulled. Okay, we, we got to our 37 now. And th this isn't really, a, you know, I'm sorry, Craig, this is not the best example. This is starting to tell us something. See how they're coming in at 30, 36 and three quarters though? Okay, here's our skew again. Now, do they stay in the order book is, is key. And what's the reaction price? Looks like sellers want to take these guys on. And there they go. Okay, now, what happened after that? Is there still more selling down here? Let's take a look. Are they adding more on the bid and what's the reaction to, or on the offer and what's the reaction to that? OK, 
Okay, see how it's balanced right now, more or less? We're looking for an imbalance, and here's a bit of an imbalance right here. Okay, and they're pulling up here, they're adding here. Great, we're finding buyers, great. Should come up to 40, should go up to 41. Okay, it made it up to 40. Now, do they do they still add in here? See, we, we want to see if we get a strong breakout of this area, and then they're adding more up at some of these areas here in the order book. And see, look at this kind of wall of liquidity now. It's not looking too good for it to continue. I don't, it's dark down here. I, I think sellers are going to drive it right back down to 36. And it doesn't take a whole lot of selling to move it back down into these areas here. Okay, now it only moved down to about 37. Okay, this is turning into a pretty big wall here, and they seem to be interested in selling here. Okay, that's a lot of levels of liquidity here, right? And they're pulling here on the bid. All right, so let's, they're adding even more in here. Okay, now what we want to understand as well in here is like this dark area. You know, when we see a move back up and it's dark underneath, it's it's pretty easy to drive it right back down. Okay, so we, we want to be aware of that because, like, uh, if they're not going to bid up and stay in the order book to support this, uh, it can easily move back down to lower levels of liquidity. Okay, now here, this is getting interesting. Let's see, see the reaction. We, now, this came in a little bit later, but this came in first, this little area right here. Okay, do you see that distinction? Okay, so it's a pressure here. There's buying demand here. What is the reaction of price? Okay, we started to see it moving up here. So we're looking for it to trade up into like first probably would be up here at 40 and then maybe 40 and a half or maybe try to tangle with some of these guys up here uh, if we still even see higher demand at a higher level here. Okay, now it was very short lived. It did make it to 40 though. Okay. Then these guys pulled. Now, if they stayed in the order book, it would be different, right? So this is what we're trying to gauge. We're trying to gauge and understand the, the condition of the auction in here. The context of it. Okay, here's a bit of a skew coming in. Let's see how does how does price react to that. Let's see them drive it back down to 32. I want to see these guys. Now, this is again like if we're, you know, usually the order book is pretty balanced, right? And and this is how we can also look at it this way here. We can insert a new column in here, and we can add in here. Um, or configure it to show aggregation, okay, to look at kind of order book skew uh, as well. I and mean, you can see a skew down here. Look at this, right? What's the reaction to this liquidity down here? We're starting to find buyers. Okay, they should be able to move it up to 37 then. Now, we're, see, see the context here is sellers are interested in this liquidity down here. In fact, this is kind of distracting at the moment. So the liquidity is down here. Now they're bidding up here. Okay. Do we find buyers? No, nope, not really. All right, so sellers are going to go for this liquidity here, most likely. And then they'll try to trade. This guy's pulling now and adding back in. Now they're adding more here. What's the reaction? Okay, we found some sellers interested in that liquidity. Do we get more sell? If we get more sellers here at 32 and a half, we should be able to trade back down into these levels here. Okay, now we're finding buyers and they're pulling up here. I mean, this is really back and forth action in here. I mean, no question about it. And it changes. 
It's an auction. It's changing. Okay, now we're looking at it on these smaller time frames and going through several examples, back and forth, etc. Okay, see it pulled again. Let's see, if they, they, do they add here on the bid? A little bit. What's the reaction? Buyers. Okay, let's see if we can try to get higher here then. Now, now see how they kind of pulled in here. Now, you, you know, this looks very fickle. We're going back and forth and yeah, it's changing. It should go this way. It should go that way. We can zoom out and we can look at this on much, much higher time frames. Right, and start to understand these levels. So 30, now let's match 30 liquidity up with our market structure. Here it is. Here's the swing down here. Here, we can use this new feature in the heat map uh, uh, to uh, lessen the, uh, the heat map um, uh, transparency. And let's draw a line in. Okay, That's why this liquidity is here. It's this swing right here. Okay. There's another swing down here, and this is where we have that. We see this breakout to the upside for the day. All right. So now uh, let's see what what happened. We're below some of these other swings here that we kind of marked up, and we we still went lower. Okay. Now what about this liquidity down here, at this level? Uh, they they are. Um, uh, they seem to be, uh, they're adding, or I'm sorry, the liquidity is above the swing, actually. This is kind of bullish here. This is bullish. We, we, if That means that they're trying to buy basically uh, uh, in front of, like, you know, they're supporting it here, basically. Uh, else you'd see them be below that area uh, and want to buy it at a deeper discount here. So this is kind of bullish liquidity in here. It's even more bullish. We just kind of missed it when they start to come into the order book like this. Or no, we did see this. We did see this. Okay. So now we have bigger picture understanding of liquidity here. Okay. Now, what was the reaction? Well, we we found our buyers here. Okay, to this liquidity. It took a little while, a little back and forth in here, and we've come up to the top of 40 now, the range here. Any questions on this? Okay, so we're kind of, you know, we're, we're reading a lot of little nuances in here. And I know that that can be kind of confusing. Uh, we can zoom out, though, and we can look at higher time frames. And we just went and went through this higher liquidity. And now that, that seems to be working pretty well here. They're buying in front of the swing here. And they were bidding up down here. And this is a nice block of liquidity. Whereas we saw the other block of liquidity up here. Now on the higher time frame, this block of liquidity, we can see what happened, right? Price went down and traded into this liquidity here. And then it kind of dribbled down a little bit further. Okay, they're coming in again. See them coming in again? Okay, there's our imbalance in the order book. Let's see if sellers now can trade it right back down into 30 and 31. Okay, looking for it. And now we're going to look at some nuances in here as well. Okay, when does that heat map start to give us some, some more insight? Okay, here they come. A little bit on the offer here. What's the reaction? They, they pulled. And they're adding on the bid. So this is back and forth in here right now. Okay, looking for something, looking for a distinction here. Okay, this is a distinction right here. See that distinction? And look at the look at the movement. Okay, it's not much of one. It's just a, it's a smaller one. Okay, bigger picture though, we're still looking for this to fill down here 30 31. And here we go. Here here they here they go. Uh, moving down on the offer, and they're just kind of staying here in the book at between 30 and 31. Now they're starting to add in a little bit. Okay, so they want to be buyers here. Okay, here's our distinction on the offer. Sellers, we should be able to trade into this now. Looking for the move into 30 and 31. And there it is. Beautiful. Okay, so uh stop run as well now we're not looking at volume here 
at all. Right? We're just looking at the order book and price action. The relationship of this context and of the price action and structure of price action uh, and, and liquidity within that structure. All right, let's zoom out. Let's take a look. All right, so now we're getting down in some really interesting areas. We're down below this. We should see some pretty big stop runs in here. Uh, look at other price action or uh, price structure elements here. We drew one up here around 24. Uh, we also have another one right around here where it broke out from at 27. Now, is there liquidity in those areas here? Not really, not yet. Okay, so we're kind of looking and, and, and waiting and watching here. Okay, we're also looking for a potential false breakdown here. Why? We just filled this liquidity in here. Price didn't drop that significantly. Okay, now what if we get, you know, we'd be looking for our green dots in here and we can see the bars here. So they are in. So we're looking actually for a move to the other side of the range here, uh, maybe up to 46.40 again. See how we're back in the range here? after this liquidity got filled. Okay, now we gotta get through this most traded level right here, and we gotta get through it on buy volume size, and we don't have volume to look at right now, so we're gonna look at liquidity. Okay, are they bidding up here? Are they pulling on the offer? A little bit, yeah. Now they pulled here though, we, we need to see them stay in the order book here, we need to see these guys pull and we want price to start moving up. Okay, this block here of liquidity, they need, we need to, I wanna see them lift it and I wanna see it come up into 40. And nothing doing right now. Okay, order book looks pretty balanced. We're looking for that imbalance. Okay, it's a little it's imbalanced on the on the offer here. So let's see if price can move right back down to 30 then. Okay, now look at the they're interested again here between 30 and, and now a little bit lower though, 28. Okay, here's our move into 30. Okay. So we didn't get up to 40, we got up to here. Our previous line in here. Is it, do you guys find this helpful? I mean, I, I, I find it, you know, and tremendously helpful and insightful of understanding context of liquidity. And, uh, you know, th this, this will talk about like, you know, optimizing your trading. Look at your higher time frames. Uh, and start to understand the auction. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I uh, okay. I missed the some of the questions in here. Um. Uh, I scrolled up and left it scrolled up, uh, so I didn't see any questions. Sorry. So, David, let's see. Can you, can those liquidity lines also be stops? No, no, no. Um, they're they're never stops. Uh, it well, unless it's a stop limit um, uh, or limit. No, I'm sorry. It wouldn't even be that. Wouldn't even be the correct uh, answer. They're limit buys and limit sells, and that's it. That's all it is. Uh, a limit. Um, a stop limit is it turns into a limit once it is um, uh, triggered or uh, unpacked as soon as the market hits it or some sort of condition maybe it's pips away and then it triggers or something right we have that functionality in bookmap uh, you can have your stop limit triggered uh, a certain number of pips away if you want okay vintage you, you find this helpful good all right Ah, okay, Scotty. Uh, the context has been invaluable. Uh, do you have recommendations for lagging bookmap? For a lagging bookmap, my bookmap lags. Ooh, um, I, it should not be lagging at all, uh, Scotty. I don't know what the um, why. Uh, 50, 50 or sixty seconds, depending on the market. Um, 
uh, please reach out to support and get this uh, fixed immediately. Um, this is, uh, it, 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 it might not be book map at all. Um, it could be so many different things. Uh, it might be, it could be your, your, you know, computer uh, hardware. It could be your connection to the internet, uh, especially if you're wirelessly connected, uh, immediately um, uh, fix that by connecting directly. All right. Support, uh, then uh, tell them that it, to es it's escalated, it escalated. I mean, like, uh, here, I'll, I'll ping them right now. Um, and, and, and tell them because, uh, yeah, that, that's essential. Uh, there is, I can show you actually, um, uh, let's see, um, uh, some, some resources though. I think they're going to point you to these resources, to be honest, uh, immediately, like I'm going to, um, Okay. All right. So uh, hold on a minute here and let me find those resources. Okay. And uh, sorry, guys, we're, we're kind of missing some moves here, it looks like. Um, yeah, Scotty, let me let me let me take a quick look at the uh, price action here and we'll get to it. All right. So, yeah, we're below that area or below this area here. Okay. So uh, and there still seems to be selling. So uh, we're looking for maybe the move back down to our next level and that and the liquidity is here around 25 so let's see if we can move back down there okay now keeping a close eye on this though we're down at some of these interesting levels and we know that some of this liquidity filled in here i mean we can see the volume bar in here but price moved into it and and this liquidity stayed in the order book so you know going off of that and then also verifying it with a volume bar uh at least i know that there were they they stayed in the order book here uh, and got filled. Now that's important, right? So we're looking for false break breakdowns and, and potential for a move back into the range here. Okay, and it kind of did it here. Well, it kind of did it a few different times. It did it here. We were looking for that, and we're looking for higher. Um, and it's trying to do it again. It's still kind of fighting it here, right? So we want to take a look at uh, what's going on in the auction currently. All right, and let's get to, uh, this is where you can find out about it. Go to uh, Knowledge Base here uh, on the More button, okay, on uh, bookmap.com, the More button, Knowledge Base here, takes you here. Uh, and then we're going to um, go through their system requirements here. So you might want to take a look at that first, okay. Uh, and then we're going to scroll down here to... Uh, help the help section here okay so bookmap performance FAQs okay click on that uh, and then go through this there's many different uh, on the on the right margin here uh, you'll see the different uh, uh, sections to go through okay so market data is lagging okay right here this will be important okay so um, those are the first uh, uh, you know kind of uh, uh, resources to check out Scotty as well as I've pinged uh, support okay so uh, uh, hope hopefully that helps you out. Yeah, yeah, you got you. Oh, you got a new machine. Okay, you you should not should not be a, a, an issue. Yeah, it might be your connection. Um, it might be like a, it, it could be a whole host of things. All right, so we're trading back down into liquidity here at twenty seven. Okay, they're staying in the order book. Look at the distinction here. See how they're staying in the order book? See how they're adding? Now they're adding kind of below it here. So it's getting interesting, very interesting in here. We're seeing, and let's just zoom out. We're seeing some interest on, on the bid here. Now let's get that context again. Okay, now we were, we were kind of in that myopic view there. Now that we're zoomed out a little bit more, how important is this liquidity? Well, it, it's not, it looks pretty good. It's kind of, look at, you know they keep on adding in here so that looks pretty good um, but it wasn't in here for a long time it's, it's new liquidity so you know 
uh, it's these areas that have kind of stayed in the order book for a long, long time. And, you know, the market knows it, it can, you know, trade up to this sell uh, liquidity or supply up here. That's uh, kind of more important. So this area here was more important. Okay. Now, here we go with our false breakdown. Okay. Looking for our buyers, looking for a move back up into uh, the swing at, at 36 here. And then maybe we can get to 40 as well. We've collected a lot of sellers down here they're moving price is moving pretty quickly away from that area back into the range here and it's already made it back to point of control i want to see it go to the other side of the range now the first other side of the range is right here and we're almost there at 36 the others the other one is here up at 40 due to this this um, kind of bigger range and bigger picture i think we can make it to 40. Okay, based on the context of just structure and liquidity here. Now, what's helping us out a ton is also the move, this strong move here. Okay, we don't know volume on it. We don't know what the volume dots look like in here. We can look at the bars, and it's kind of cheating, but we we already know that like this is uh, this is pretty uh, pretty strong move, right? So now we made it to our first target. That would be 36, and it went up a little bit higher, 37. Okay, now an initial pullback here. And I'm, I'm looking again here. Let's see. I'm looking for more buyers to support it at a higher level. And uh, I want to see uh, a move back up into see if we can get back to 40 here. Okay, now I don't like that we're below the point of control here, right? Most traded level. Now, I know that has nothing to do with the heat map. Okay, and the heat map is saying they're, they want to be buyers here and they just pulled. So they don't really want to be buyers here. They want to be buyers a little bit lower here. Okay, and they're adding on the on the uh, on the offer as well. Okay, let's look for an imbalance here, and we want to look at the at reaction to this imbalance here. Uh, uh, Rambo, Mambo, why uh, why aren't the volume dots on today? Because it was a question. Uh, if you maybe look up uh, uh, earlier, uh, we can stop this exercise. I, it's a worthy exercise to go over again and again. Um, it was um, uh, Craig uh, who uh, asked this question, okay? Uh, and uh, that's why we're going through it. Okay, I, I'm still looking to see... This is, we got to get above point of control here, uh, and we need to see it on. Um, we, well, in this view, we need to see a pretty big imbalance in in the order book. I, I like that they're pulling here already at 35. I want to see a skew here, and I want to see the mo price move up. And we're kind of getting it. We see a little bit of a skew underneath here, but they pulled. Now we had insight to this potentially playing out already because they pulled here, and they looked like they were kind of serious in here, right? And then they pulled. Now they didn't add too much on the offer or in the bid. I don't like that. But they're they're pulling here. Okay, great. You know, I'm looking for them to add on the bid at a higher level, and I want price to come up into like 37, 38, and 40. Okay. Now everything got um, kind of uh, upheavaled here. This guy came in and and you know kind of spoiled the party here. Price came back down a little bit, and then this guy came in on the offer here. Now, see how see how this had a this had an influence on price. Okay, this is this is advertising here. And they're pulling here, price move back up, and then like get these guys trapped, and then someone comes in on the offer like this. Now they're trying to get it back down to 27. Now let's take let's talk about some some strategy in here. Okay, we're down at 27, looking for 25 now too. Okay, now what happened in here? Well, this is a classic order flow uh, man maneuver around point of control. So this is where, like, uh, you know how Scott yesterday is looking at lug levels, uh, and then he's looking at the order flow around those lug levels. Here we're looking at point of control and the order flow around that point of control. And here's the outcome. So this kind of like uh, got people to, to you know, get going up this direction here, slam the door. This is like a book flip in, in essence. Uh, you know, slam the door here 
and uh, get some sellers here looking for the move lower. Okay, now, suppose we bought into that advertising in here. Okay, you, you, you looked at it, you saw it, okay, great, a move up, boom, we should get it, we should get to 37 and then 40. It doesn't work out. Okay, get out of the position, look for it, go in the opposite direction. Now, I know that's not easy to do. Uh, and, and shift mentally like that. And that's why like, uh, I, I recommend in these webinars of uh, not trading. Uh, because, uh, you know, how, how, do you, how do you handle something like that? Well, it's a lot easier when you're not in a position. Okay, and learn from it. Now look for this next time uh, when you're trading. Okay, I mean, this is a classic dupe right, right here. Pull that liquidity. I would have loved to have seen them add more on the bid here. They didn't really. Uh, and price kind of floated back up here. You know, capture some, some longs in here if you can. And then just slam the door here. Now, what was the reaction to this liquidity? Okay. Not much, actually. It didn't really do much uh, until they actually pulled. And then likely this is just a, um, th this is probably just a, a limit. Uh, there's there's a stop run in there, but this is just a, a market sell, uh, pushing it lower, likely, right? Just moving it away. Okay, but anyway, you know, you can see how other other traders kind of tune into this. Uh, and start to get reactive uh, with it, as well as stops being hit. Uh, all right, so Craig, I think I, I hope I answered your question in here. Uh, we spent almost most of the webinar going through this exercise. Uh, it's really great, though. It really, you know, really helps you focus and understand liquidity. And why that's so important is because what have we been looking at for years, maybe decades? We've been looking at price action and volume. We haven't been looking at liquidity. Liquidity was totally separate in a in a uh, um, a separate chart. Okay, your dome, your level two. You, there was no there was no education on liquidity. Okay, and understanding the context and, and the importance of liquidity. So th this is why this this exercise is really good. Now, uh, if this is confusing for a lot of uh, traders. Uh, then uh, a, a really good exercise is to don't do this one, uh, do the opposite. Put on volume dots, take off the heat map. Have just two elements here and understand the context of volume dots and price action. Now, here come our buyers. Where do we want to go? Top of the range here, uh, and maybe we can even break it here. Okay, point of control, back to 35, 37. That's what we'd be looking for. Why? Look at the buyers here. Okay. Now, we don't have liquidity. We don't have that kind of to lean on. Are they bidding up underneath here? Did they just slam on the on the offer here? We don't, we don't know. Right? We just have the context of two. And this is kind of like your, um, like your footprint chart, basically, uh, except the footprint chart is on bar data, which is aggregated. You might not see some of these smaller structures in here. Okay? Still looking for them to try to trade back up into 35 and 37 here. Still looking for it. Okay, just based on these two elements, structure and volume. Okay, we got up to almost 35. Still looking for it. I think they can I think they can pull this off. No, no. I mean, this is kind of the last gasp for the for those buyers here, right here where they broke out from. Now they need to get back up above here pretty quickly. Yeah, let's see, 35, looking for it, should be able to hit it, and then 37. I think we can get up to 37 here.
No, can't do it so far. All right. So we're, the insight we're getting from this volume is like we're not finding buyers. Actually now looking for sellers to break this line here and come back down to 27 and a half. Why? We can't get through it. We're not finding the buyers we're looking for. Here it looks pretty good. Here they're trying and they couldn't do it. They can't do it again. They're making a lower high. Looking for our sellers here and looking for them to try to trade it back down to the lower uh, ends of the range here. Okay, I guess 27 would be the 27 and a half would be the first stop. Okay, next would be 25, and let's zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, those two look good. Okay, first one, 27 and a half right here. Okay, just reading the context of these two elements here: structure and volume. Okay, our levels, important levels and volume. Now, what happened in here is was with it was within the structure. Okay, breakout, great above this, pull back, even a higher high here. Okay, good. Some volume up here, not bad. They pull back, it's putting a big dent into things. Here's our retest back up here. And do we get our buyers? No. Do we get our sellers? Yeah, starting to get sellers in here. Okay, so now we're looking for a lack of buying which we're not getting at the moment. Okay, and we're looking for more sellers. So this is this is convoluting things a little bit, the spine up here. But let's see if we get our seller. We now now if if I, I were looking for the drop into 27, I have to have sellers down here at 30. Or even 29 and and three quarters. Yeah. So, yeah, see how this kind of convoluted that here? Finding buyers back up above. So this was, it's not high probability. And we're looking for another scenario here. Sellers down here. And we didn't get them. Okay. Now, this original move looks like very likely to unfold here. The original move back up into 37 here. Okay. We made it up to 35. Okay. I still want to see it get higher, though. Now, let's look at our point of control. Again, this is pretty bearish, actually. It made it up to that point of control, and it immediately sold off. Okay, so in the bigger picture, you know, we're, we're looking very closely at this little area here at 35. Okay, can't get, can't get above it. We need to get above it on buying. Okay, there we go. Now it's looking pretty good. All right, so now they should be able to, to pull it back on up into 38 and 40. Okay, see them move it away like that. Okay. Okay, again, understanding the context here. In this case, the context is point of control. And the volume around that, con that context Okay, there's our move into 40. All right now, these things happen quickly, right? But we're, we're, we're calling it out in real time here. And we're looking for that scenario firsthand and what that scenario looks like. And this is it. Okay, we're looking for volume above this point of control. It was bearish here for a bit. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. They can't, even on this retest, they can't get above point of control. Okay, well, once they came back up again and we started to see that, yes. We're looking for the move. All right, so now we've just made it back up to 40 here, right? And now our bigger picture is of, of the context of these two elements is just we're back up to, to 40, you know, looking for a, a bit of a pullback here. Now, if, if we, and, and not much, maybe, maybe back down to just about here, um, you know, maybe 35. Um, and maybe it, it needs to bounce off of point of control again, right? This would be a pullback to point of control. Now, what if we get sellers down below here? This would be a false breakout here. Okay, so we need to be, a, and, and this is how you can, you can consider weaving trade management into uh, your order flow readings here. Okay, so, uh, so for example, 
you know, you're looking for that breakout and you're looking for the move to the other side of the range. But that was it at the moment. We don't know uh, after that. Okay, so now are you still bullish in here? Bigger picture? Boy, I, I'm, you know, I wouldn't be. Um, uh, I, I like this move here, uh, but I am looking for the pullback and it's now back in the range and we're actually below point of control. Right, so this is a false breakout. Okay, looking for these sellers to try to drive it away now very quickly down to 25. Uh, and we're back down into these, these areas here. Okay, back down to uh, a 17 or 15, uh, maybe low of the day. Okay, it can't seem to stay above point of control. Okay, so again, structure and volume around these structural structural areas here. Not only structure in terms of point of control, but ranges. The, the swing here and the swing down here. So here's our move just about into 25. There it is. Okay, so how, how can you consider trade management around some of these areas uh, without going mad? Well, just try to trade for the, the and this is something Alan, I know Alan's in here, um, that Alan asked uh, like a couple of years ago. Uh, and the answer was, um, well, just look for the higher probability uh, uh, outcomes and scenarios. And when they start to unfold, uh, look for that and look for a minimum target. You know, take a minimum target. Uh, and um, uh, once you once you uh, take like a, a minimum target, then you can like, uh, or that can be your full full uh, uh, target, you know, just get in and get out, all in, all out. In fact, that might be the easiest. Once, uh, you know, it becomes more advanced and, and uh, you're more, uh, uh, you've seen many instances of this, you can consider going for, you know, easing out of it, scaling out one leg, holding it for for bigger, uh, bigger move. <laughs> you're not that old, Alan. But it was more than a year ago, for sure. I, I know that. Okay, D David, that's a good question. So you're trying to feel how to get a feel for how to implement this in your trading. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm hoping that this is starting to, to cover it. You know, you're looking for these kind of minimum uh, moves that are higher probability. Uh, and then we don't really know after that. And unless, you know, that's where we need to get more context. Uh, but we do know is if we can get back down below this kind of point of control here and we see some selling in here, we're looking for the other side of the range. Uh, if We're looking for a pullback and for it to bounce off of this area here, 35. Okay, now this is a, it's a little more convoluted, this one here, just because uh, this was the move. Uh, uh, it's still within a range here, right? It, it made it above point of control, but it didn't really break out from the range. Right, we want to see it break out from the range. See how this this move here sets up this you know pretty pretty nice move to the downside now. Look at the selling here, right now. Look at the selling and where is it going? Okay, lots of selling. Do we get price movement uh, with it though? Not yet. Why? Look at this huge iceberg just coming in, huge. This is like 2,000. This, they're absorbing here. Now we don't even have the heat map on, but we know this is absorbing. Look at the size of these dots here and look at how, how much price moved. It didn't move much at all. Okay, so we know that a larger player and iceberg orders are getting filled in this area here. So is a good question, David. I think maybe I'll cover more and more about the trade, maybe the, the usage, use scenarios here. Uh, the, the, the important part, though, I, I think first is um, to be able to read the order flow uh, and go through scenarios and, and, and kind of go through this analysis of like, wow, we see this. Now, let's, what are we looking for? What's the scenario here? See, because we see all this absorption, but we're right back down here again. Now I'm looking, now what if we get more sellers here? Well, then they should be able to drive it lower. The order flow rules here first. Iceberg is nice. It's nice to see that. 
But we, we want we want to see buyers above this area in here if it's going to move away from uh, this range here. We're not getting that. We're still seeing more selling pressure in here. So sellers ought to move this lower still. Okay. Now, how can you get a position on it? Well, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you'd be willing to maybe take a risk on this one. But, yeah, we're looking for it to go lower. Right now, yeah, due to there there being a lot of absorption, a lot of icebergs, we're at the end of the uh, kind of uh, bottom of the range here. It's possible to come right back in, uh, and and find buyers try to reach right back up into value area here at 35. Right, we we want to see the sellers move it away on on power. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, um, and you know it's it's a little more convoluted here, for sure. And what does that mean? Well, lots of things can happen, uh, and we don't we don't think it's a high probability at this point. Let's take a look at your image here, David. Okay. And going through these scenarios, I think, is key. Okay, so let's see. What did you say here? Um, what happened here at forty six twenty three is exactly what I was wondering about in combination with the swings. It's so conflicting for me still. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, traded into high liquidity here, right? Uh, yeah, they, they pulled and added back in. Yeah, I mean, it, this is, so th this is a little confusing. I mean, like, uh, yeah, they, you know, traded into this area here, and we got a little bit of a bounce out of it. It's, it's not really telling us much here. Okay, so... Uh, uh, you know, they, they kind of added lower. Now, what if they came in and added a bunch more up in here, though, like in this area here, and we found a lot of buyers? Then it's telling us something a lot more. So, you know, it it's, it's uh, more likely for a move to take place. It's kind of understanding the footprints here of the, uh, I know that's a bad word to use. Um, you know, um, trying to see the tracks of of, of, the, of the traders uh, and uh, kind of sniff it out here like what what direction might they be going here uh, and uh, and trying to get a feel for for the market and the auction we can go through something um, I think a lot simpler let's just look at a specific level that's important and then order flow around a level and just keep it at that Instead of all this back and forth in here, and yes, it should go here, it should go there, whatever. Like, um, uh, let's just look at specific levels uh, in a range, and then that's it. And then order flow around it. Okay, so now we've come back down into this kind of um, little high volume node down here. Okay, and we're below a range here. Okay, well, all right, so the scenario at this, at this low here is we're still in a downtrend, but what if we get buyers back up here for at 25? Then we're kind of back into this range, and I'd be looking for a move back to 30. Okay, so that's the scenario. Okay, else, I'm looking for uh, more sellers down here at 20 and to drive it lower. Okay, now that would be low of day, right? Yeah, down here around 15. Okay, so let's look at let's go around let's go over volume and and uh, let's add the heat map back on here now we're gonna look at everything okay anyway just a, a note before we put the heat map back on um, this is something to consider uh, you know looking at these two elements and starting to understand this context really well uh, before adding a third context that third context can you know really adds a lot more into it and makes it um, uh, you know more more complex for sure Okay, so we just filled this liquidity. Okay, so now we're looking for a move back in. Let's see if we can get our buyers here. Okay, we're back in the range. Now we need to see buyers up here. Okay, a lot at 22 and a half. Okay, order book's not telling us much right now. We're not seeing the buyers. We're, we're drifting up there, but we're not seeing the buyers. Okay, they're adding more on the offer here. Okay, so yeah. Nothing, nothing shaken. 
Okay, now they're adding a little more on the bid here. We, we want to see them add up higher than that up here, maybe maybe around 19 or 20. And I want to see them pull at 23 and 25. Okay, so we're at our swing. This is the level we're looking at, you know, our 20 to 18 le level here. Okay, now we're looking at our swing and we're looking for a move back into the range here. Okay, these are our levels here. Okay, not, we didn't get the buyers we're looking for still. It's starting to bid up a little bit. And nothing shaking, you know, no, 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 no edge right now. We're looking at our, you know, this is our level down here around, uh, around, let's call it 18 and three quarters. Okay. Up to 23 and three quarters. And we're looking for order flow around it here. Okay, so here here come some sellers here. Debt hadn't taken on this liquidity yet. They're going to take them on, and they're probably going to trade it lower here. And there's our move into 18. Okay, now this this move below the, the range here, how much selling is that and how much of a movement is it? It's not much. And see how the buyers are right back in the middle of the range here. In fact, this has already been a move back to this smaller high volume node right here. Or just about, just about close, close enough for me. All right now we got our sellers trying to move it away here. They're trying. All right, I think they should. They should be able to move it down. There they go. So looking, we're looking for low of day, 15. Okay, and then the liquidity is down a little bit lower though, 14. Okay, now we're getting a battle here. And, and we would kind of anticipate this battle. We've got a few different things going on for this battle to start to unfold here. First off, we're at the low of the day. Right, that's that's uh, they're gonna there's gonna be a big battle at, at you know highs and lows of the day. Secondly, we're very close to the London close on Friday. Okay, so there's gonna be you know a lot of a lot of back and forth in here. Okay, now what happened in here? We had high liquidity filled. We found sellers. And now what if we get buyers back up above this little tra this transaction right here? Okay, looking for a move right back into, uh, yeah, this swing and also this point of control. Or this high volume node. Okay, looking for it. See how they pulled here? We just need to find a few more buyers at 17 and we can move. A little bit of skew on the bid. There we go. Let's see the move. Let's see back to 20. Okay, liquidity is here at 20. See how we're above this area here? Okay, and look at, see how they're not here. Now they're starting to support it on, on the bid. Not much, not much at all. See how this is just not as high probability. They're not really supporting it here. And it just exhausted out up here as well. Okay, so the order flow around this event here for a move back in, it's not looking too good. It still may do it, but yeah, you know, the pieces that we put together in this area here, it's not looking so great. So, you know, and yet it, yet it, it, follow, it followed through to 20. Okay, so uh, 
there there's the move however like it just doesn't look good um exhausted here uh not much support on on the uh, uh on the bid which means sellers in these areas can drive it down here very very quickly okay here we go again more buyers okay this is starting to shape up better okay looking for the move back to this uh 22 and at 22 even Okay, we really want to see them on the bid here at a higher level. And a pull here on the offer. And we're not we're not seeing it. See, it's just not as high probability, that's all. It's like, okay, well, we're looking for order flow around these levels here. Okay, we, we, we saw something kind of nice that looked like it might move back up into 20, and then we kind of bailed on that idea in here just wasn't looking good uh, yeah these webinars are recorded uh, and posted so the, you can find it in this thread here just scroll up a bit you'll find it ah thanks thanks for the uh, kind words there All right, David, I don't know if that helps you, David, a bit, um, but uh, we'll go, go over it again, you know, you know, more and more. Like, here's here's a double bottom pattern, you know, at the at the low of the day here. Uh, and uh, the, the, the context is, well, we found sellers here, okay, but see how, look at buyers snapped it away very, very quickly. Okay, so they maybe, maybe the, I, I don't like it still, but they have the potential to move it right back up uh, to, you know, higher the range here. This is a false breakdown, right? So looking for buyers to try to move it back up into areas where they can cover. Um, that would probably be up here around 20 again. But see, see how we're just not finding that buying interest really. It's some, but see how it's dark still underneath here? There, a little help there now on the bid, pushing, pulling. They're pulling on the offer. They should be able to get it up to about 20. Okay, let's see it. Let's see it, buyers back up to 20 or 21. <laughs> no, no, they cannot do it. And uh, this is that, I mean, it was, it was starting to look okay in here. Now we're right back now that now they should be able to do it. Let's see a little bit more on the on the bid here. That ought to seal the deal, and they're not they're not on the bid. So another another rotation, right? We're looking for that order book to kind of like give us some some help here. All right, let's see if we can get our buyers here. Looking for a skew in the book right around here, around sixteen and a half or so nothing nothing so far in, in fact exhaustion actually looking for potential for sellers here at 16 and a quarter yeah all right so sellers here let's see if they can drive it now lower back down into maybe 14. okay now again this is not really high probability stuff like the order book is is you know it's not really helping us too much. It's kind of dark on on either side. Still, we're going to read the order flow, right? We're making we couldn't get back up here. We're look we're pulling for these buyers. They couldn't do it. 
it's starting to exhaust out up here. We're looking for our sellers. Uh, and they, they at least made it back down to about 415 here. Okay. But uh, liquidity is still down here at 14. Okay, they should be able to hit it again here. Sellers into this is into this liquidity here. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the book and balance here it it was more balanced to the to the to the bid side here, right? And you can see it here. There it is again. This is this is what we we're looking for earlier. Now, what's the reaction to it? And there's our buyers. Okay, so there and there's a nice there's the nice move back up into twenty. Okay, see see how this this can help you here. This was this was a convoluted move though in here. Like you know, uh, we were looking for buyers up here. We were looking for the support. It did not come in. Had to drop a few more times here. We're looking for the drop lower here, uh, and that it didn't really pan out. It came back down to about fourteen and three quarters. Uh, and then uh, uh, we had this skew in the book here, hard hard to catch, hard to catch that one. Okay, but this came in first before the the volume move here, though you can see that, and that's a that's a beautiful stop run too, beauty. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, six hundred or so stops. All right, so we, our London close is uh, just uh, just upon us here. So uh, uh, you know this volatility uh, kind of occurring or kicking up at the uh, at the close is uh, uh, anticipated. So uh, let's uh, we'll end the webinar. So we've been going about an hour and a half, almost hour and twenty five minutes. Uh, went through a few different exercises, looking for some of these moves to unfold. Um, we went over some higher time frame stuff. But mostly uh, uh, it was exercise on uh, uh, reading the order flow um, uh, of the um, uh, the order book and how that affects price, uh, and then also about uh, the uh, the volume and how that affects you know price or the structure. Uh, so uh, these two elements together. Now uh, I want to I want to uh, make a point clear though. Okay, we're going through these three elements, structure, volume, uh, and um, uh, the, the uh, liquidity or the supply and the demand. Okay, now, if you're a pattern trader, okay, you're looking at bottom, double bottoms and tops and flags and pennants and wedges and, you know, all of this kind of stuff, head and shoulders, uh, it is the order flow within those patterns that you want to watch, okay? And you want to you want to uh, uh, be uh, you know kind of keyed into. This is where this is the way you trade. You're looking for a confirmation of a head and shoulders. Look at the order flow to help you confirm that. That will make a big big difference. Now, suppose you are a uh, volume profile trader. Okay, we've covered a little bit of it here, but not much. Right now, use your strategies within volume profile. Maybe you read Dalton. Maybe you read uh, uh, Stadelmeyer. Uh, now, use some of those ideas, but look at the order flow within those ideas. And this is where you're going to get the edge. Like on this high, higher time frame here, yeah, this looks great for a move right back up to point of control here around 35. Okay, see the buyers coming in. Look at look at the bid here. See how they're underneath here on the bid, and we're finding our buyers. Great. Let's move on up into most traded level or um, you know value areas. Okay, so there's your strategy together with the order flow. Okay, so takes know those strategies very very well. Uh, know where you usually get in in, in a head and shoulders or whatever. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, now look at the order flow to confirm it. Okay, so we, so we just did it here. 
uh, with volume profile very, very quickly. You know, look, look at the buyers coming in, right? And we're above our little areas here, a structural. This was a false breakdown of this little structure. We're seeing some pretty big volume and they're supporting it on the bid here. Still finding buyers. These are res responsive buyers. We want to tr have them trade back to about 35. Okay, looking for this to unfold. Okay, this is looking higher probability on this time frame. Okay, because of the volume and 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 the order book, and we're already back in the structure here. So there, there's your your um, uh, putting together your um, volume profile uh, along with your order flow. Okay, all right, guys. Uh, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. We're, we'll wrap it up, uh, and um, this will be on the. Uh, uh, recorded uh, YouTube page here. Uh, give it a few hours uh, or so. I'll put it up and uh, you can review it if you like. Okay, let's see here. Um, Alan, uh, do you get a post? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look, Alan. Um, Oh, moderator stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, Tom. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, nice to see you in here, Tom. So, um, uh, <laughs> all right. This is, I was worried about this from the get go. So are you going to make it out of Costa Rica or not? Um, you know, I can you even find a flight. So uh, anyway, I hope so. Uh, we, we got you scheduled for the 18th. Now, Tom is going to be streaming, and he's going to be going through exactly what we just talked about. Uh, he's going to uh, be talking about um, uh, volume profile. He's a volume profile trader. Okay, And then he's going to be talking about the order flow within it uh, to give those insights. Okay, So we're getting a pullback here already. Right? So it's, you know, uh, still... still uh, uh, this is still in play. It's just a pullback here. Uh, and then now we're looking for buyers to and, and the bid here to support it again to come right back up uh, into 27, then 30, and then, you know, back into like 35 or so. Yeah, I know, David. Like, uh, 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 well, anyway, it's not a bad place to be stuck. That's for sure, uh, Tom. So enjoy it while you can. Uh, and uh, no worries. I mean, we'll get started when, when you get back uh, and, uh, and, and take it from there. So, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody, and we'll catch up uh, next week. All right. Bye-bye.